Bezos Hashem, today's daf is Masechta Baba Basu Daf Yudalit. We will begin on Daf Yud Gimel Amit Beis um, about towards the last um, quarter of the daf by the beginning of Ton Rabbonin. Okay, Yud Gimel Amit Beis Ton Rabbonin, about like uh, twelve lines from the bottom. Ton Rabbonin. The rabbis taught. Madbik, we're talking about uh, writing a Torah Neviim Ksuvim on uh, on a Parchment. So Torah and Bonan, the rabbis taught Madbig Odim Torah Neviim Ksuvim Keechad. One could write the whole Torah, the whole Neviim, the whole Ksuvim Keechad on one parchment, one long parchment. You could write it together and put it all together. Div Reb Meir, so says Reb Meir. And the novelty of this is that when you roll it, obviously sometimes when you finish the Torah, the Neviim is going to be on, wrapped around. And on top of the Torah, and the Ksuvim is going to be in, wrapped around and on top of the Neviim. Still, Rabbi Meir says, if it's on one parchment, that's okay. Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yehuda disagrees. He says, Torah b'fnei atzma, Neviim b'fnei atzma, Ksuvim b'fnei atzma. You have to write each each one separately on their own cloth. Torah has to be on its own parchment, Neviim has to be on its own parchment, and Ksuvim has to be on its own parchment. And the entire Neviim could be, could be uh, on its own uh, on its own parchment comes along Chachamim. I mean, Chachamim says, "Call Echad ve'Echad b'fnei Atzmi." Every sefer of Neviim and Ksuvim has to be written on its own parchment, uh, on a separate scroll. Yom Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda said, "My sev be'bayisus ben Zunin shoy leishmoyin Neviim medubakim b'keechad api Rab Lazar ben Azariah." With the hechsher of Rab Lazar ben Azariah, this person Bayisus ben Zunin, probably a wealthy person, he had eight scrolls of Neviim. Written all together, not like the Chachamim. Yeshoimim. Others say no. Yeloi hoy yeloi el echav of nei atzmoi. Others say no. That Baisus ben Zinin had actually a a Navi scroll for every sefer of Navi, like the Chachamim. Amar Rebbe Rebbe said, Maisa ve'avi lefneu Torah Navi and Ksuvim debakim v'achad. They brought before me a scroll that had Torah Navi and Ksuvim all wrapped in together. V'ichsharnim. I said it's kosher. Other halachas regarding writing a Sefer Torah and Neviim. Ben Chumash Lechumash Shel Torah, between each a book of Torah, between Reishish and Shmoish, Shmoish and Ve'yikra, you have to leave over a space of Abo Ashit in four lines. Ve'chein Ben Kol Novi Novi. Between each Novi, each Sefer of Novi, you have to leave over four lines. Uv Novi Shnel Shnei Moser. But if you have the Trey Oser Novi, which has 12 little books of Novi, uh, Gimel Shittim. Then you leave over three lines between each each Navi. Um Saim Mil Mata. And you can end off, uh, if it happens that your end of a book uh, is at the bottom of a page, Maschim Mil you can start the next book on top of the page. And you don't have to leave a space, uh, a little space in between. Tana Rabban, the rabbi is taught, Horoitz Ledabek Torah Nevi'im Ksum Ke'echad, Medabek. If you want to put Torah Nevi'im Ksum Ke'echad, if you want to put them all in one Torah scroll, in one, one scroll, in one parchment, medabik, that's okay. Ba'isa b'roisha k'day logul amud, v'soifa k'day logul hakaf. So here you have to see the picture. Uh, basically, when you start the chumash over here, you can see on the picture, um, you have the chumash. You leave a little space so you can wrap around the stick, right? The stick on the right side. Uh, that's And that's what it says. That's the amount that you have to leave over. But at the end, you have to leave over you have to leave over enough uh, empty space that it can wrap around the circumference of the entire scrolls that you have. So therefore, you leave over uh, a little much more much more space than you leave in the beginning. So that's what the Bryce says. So the Bryce in the beginning to logal amma to wrap around the stick. logal to wrap around the circumference of the entire scroll. If you, you can end off in the bottom and start a new book on the top. Then the, we go to Daf Yudalad of, of Adalif. If you want to cut the scrolls into different books, that's permitted to do so. So the Gemara says, my comma. What, what's, what's, what are you saying over here? In other words, everybody wants you to, it's it's only a bidiavid. Ex facto, you should put them all together. But everybody would rather have that you have Torah separately, every Sefer of Novi separately, every Sefer of Ksubim separately. So what does it mean? If you want to do it, you can do it. So the Gemara says, Hachi Kama. This is what the Brisa means to say. The reason why 
you don't have to leave over space when one Navi book ends on the bottom and another Navi book and starts on the top. You don't have to leave over space because if you want to cut it, you should you should be able to cut it. And therefore, to write away a new Navi book starting on the top and it would be like it would be not appropriate if you have to leave over space and then you have the next Navi book starting uh, uh, from uh, a little more down than the other Navi book. So therefore, that's the reason why uh, that's the reason why Misai Mamato Masku Mamala, that if you finish a Navi book on the bottom of a page, you can start the next Navi book on the top of the page. Because really, we'd rather have you separate them out. And when you separate them out, then you should really have the uh, a new Navi book starting on top of the page. Okay. Ama uh, Uraminu. So the Gemara asks a question. Kila Sefer Sefer Kadei Kadei Logal. The beginning of the book and the end of the book should have enough space to wrap around a stick. Kadei Logal Mai. I Kadei Logal Ama to wrap around a stick. Kashi Hekav. But then at the end of the book, we just said that you have to have a little bit more space to wrap around the circumference. I Kadei Logal Hekav. If it's to wrap, if it means you have to have enough space to wrap around the the circumference, Kashi Amit, that, that we said that in the beginning, all you need is a little bit of space to wrap around the stick. It's two separate dinam. In the beginning, you have to leave it, like I said, in the, in the end, you leave it like this, extra space uh, to wrap around the circumference. In the beginning, you just need enough space to wrap around once around the stick. Uh, Rabbi, Ashi, um, Rabbi Ashi says, no, that's talking about a sefer that we're familiar with that has two sticks. Kiditanya, we learned in the Brisa. So therefore, all you need is enough to wrap around the sticks. Kiditanya, we learned in the Brisa. Kol asvam neglom mit klasim v'seifim. Every sefer is 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 wrapped around from the beginning till the end. The sefer Torah, but the sefer Torah neglom lemtsiyasi. You wrap it around so you could be in the middle because you're constantly reading the sefer Torah. So that's why you have two sticks and to hold the place. You make a stick on each side. So that's called Atzichayim, by the way. And therefore, uh, when the when the Brisa teaches us that you, all you need is enough wrap around to wrap around the stick, it's talking about a regular Sefer Torah the way we're familiar with. Those that wrote Sefer Torahs in Jerusalem, that's how they used to make their Sefer Torahs, with two sticks the way we're familiar with. And therefore, you don't need so, such a big space at the end because you just have a little stick anyway, and that's enough respect for the Sefer Torah. Torah Baran. Now the rabbis teach us like this. The, the length of the Sefer Torah should not be greater than the circumference of the Sefer Torah after it's wrapped up. So suppose the length of the Sefer Torah is, uh, is 20 inches. So then it shouldn't be more than the circumference once you roll the Sefer Torah and you have a circumference of, of, of the entire Sefer Torah. That circumference uh, should not be, the, the length should not be greater than that circumference. So if the, the circumference should also be, uh, so it should also be uh, equal to the length or less than the length, uh, but equal to the length because the, it also says like you can't make the circumference more than the length. So you can't make the circumference twenty four inches, and the length only tw twenty inches, or the uh, or the opposite, make the length twenty inches and the circumference eighteen inches. So it requires a special skill to write a sefer Torah to make it precise that the length of the sefer Torah, the length of the sefer Torah, should be like the like the circumference of the sefer Torah. Shalos Rebbe, she is sefer Torah Kama. They ask Rebbe how much of a sefer Torah. What is the the shear of the length of a sefer Torah? So Rebbe said, Big Vil, if you're using Gvil, you should make it the height six tfachim. Uh, and this is the length, the length, because the, because Rashi says the gvil type of parchment was thick and therefore it had a big circumference. So therefore you need the length to be six tfachim. And therefore there, he said, you'll be able to 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 make the circumference equal to the length of the Sefer Torah. The klaf kama, the klaf kama, if you're using klaf, so how much is that? So then Rebbe said any day, I don't know precisely how long cloth should be so that the circumference equals the uh, equals the uh, equals the length and length equals the circumference. Very interesting. So, so it took a special skill to write a Sefer Torah so that when you wrote a Sefer Torah, the length of the Sefer Torah equaled the circumference of the Sefer Torah when you completed it. So the Gemara says, Rafuna tried to do that. He cost of Shivan Sifrei Torah Raisa, Veloy Isram Elechad. He wrote 70 Sefer Torahs, and only one of them turned out to be kosher. Uh, so he tried and tried and tried, and he only got one kosher Sefer Torah. Vacha Bar Yaakov, cost of Chad, he wrote, he was able to write one. 
on the height of a calf, and he was successful making the length equal the circumference. So Rav Achabiyakov did a supreme feat of trying it once, trying his hand once, writing a Sefer Torah, and he was very successful at, at making the length equal the circumference. So gave him an ayin para, because he was so successful at the first shot, and he passed away early. Interesting, they gave him an ayin hara. Amalei Rabban Rav Hamnuna. Rabbanan said to the Rav Hamnuna, Kosiv Rabbi Ami, Rab Ami, so Rabbanan was telling Rav Hamnuna about Rav Ami, he wrote, Dalad Meya Sifri Taira. He wrote 400 Sifri Taira. So that's very impossible to do that in one's lifetime. It takes a year to write a Sifri Taira, if you would, uh, even today, maybe more. So uh, so how did he do it? Amaluhu, so he explained to his to Rabbanan that you heard the story wrong. Dilma Tarat Moshe Kasev. He he just wrote that the word Tarat Siva Lot Moshe, he wrote it down uh, four hundred times. Um I'm not sure uh what the point is that uh, he wrote it four hundred times, but apparently that's the most uh uh it's a very uh, I can say most important, but very important Pasik of the Torah. And it was uh was Rav Hamnuna kept writing it down to remind himself of something. So uh, that's that's what it's meant that he wrote four hundred sifrei Torah. Amalei Rav Rav Zera. Rav said to Rav Zera, "Neta Rav Yanai Abba Abba Mei Karmi." Rav Yamai planted four hundred vineyards. So that's also impossible. How do you plant four hundred vineyards? Amalei Dilmashtaim Kenegashtaim Ba'achas Yitzi Zonav. He did it this way. He wrote. He he planted. He planted. Uh, he didn't plant a whole vineyard. He planted five. Uh, two well, two uh, opposite each other and one like like a tail and and that's what it means he planted vineyard because if you if, if you just plant this amount of a vineyard you're ready uh, potter from going to the army as you know if you planted a brand new vineyard the Torah tells us that if you did then you, you, you then you're exempt from being part of the army so when you say Rab Ami planted 400 vineyards he didn't plant 400 vineyards large vineyards he just planted five of these type of scenarios. Uh, that's what the Gemara says. So sometimes you hear stories about rabbis which are exaggerated unless you know the exact details of it. Anyway, so you just, the Gemara is going to ask this long question over here that the circumference has to equal the, the length and the Gemara is going to say, how could it be? So I just want to bring you up, I'm going to read it quickly, but I'm going to send out the the the, the uh, pictures over here. Um, basically, what the Gemara is going to bring here is a machloikis between Rabbi Meir and Rabbi Yehuda of how the inside of the Aron looks. So let's take a look at it, and then we're going to read it inside, and it's going to go quickly. Um, basically, what the Gemara is going to say over here, this is where it's going to have its difficulty. The inside of the Aron, you had the Luchos, okay, which was, first of all, the Aron itself was... Uh, Two and a half amas, which is fifteen tefachim, and 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 one and a half ama width, according to Rameir, so that's nine tefachim, and the 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 luchos was six tefachim by twelve tefachim, and inside there was a space of two tefachim to the wall, and what the Gemara is going to say is that besides in the aron in the aron they also had the broken luchos of the first luchos that Moshe Rabbeinu broke, so there were pieces there underneath the regular. Luchas that he broke, he brought down the second time, and also there was a Sefer Torah, and this Sefer Torah was two Tvachim, and this is where the Gemara is going to ask the question: How could they fit a Sefer Torah of two Tvachim if it had a certain circumference that made the Sefer Torah larger than two Tvachim? Based on what you're saying, the Gemara is going to also say that the thickness of the wall was one Tefach. This is the opinion of Rav Meir how the Oren looked. Then we're going to learn the opinion of Rabbi Yehuda, who's going to say that there was a Sefer Torah, but not in the Aron, but on the outside of the Aron, on top of a box, or on a or on a or on a uh, shelf that extended from the Aron. Um, so, the, but according to Rabbi, Rabbi uh, Yehuda, the it was a little bit smaller the Aron than what Rameir said. It was twelve and a half tefachim by seven and a half tefachim. Again, the the the. The Lucas was six Tvachim by twelve Tvachim, all right, which was similar to what Rameir said. And then you had he also put in two silver pillars, two silver poles in the Aron, two silver poles to adorn the to to adorn the Lucas. And of course there was the Shivrei Lucas underneath, the broken pieces of the first Lucas underneath. 
So, but the Gemara's question is going to be zero in on Rav Meir. How did they fit this luch? How did they fit this Sefer Torah? If you tell me that the length of the Sefer Torah has to equal the circumference, then then the the circumference is good. the the entire Sefer Torah, based on on the way it, it, it's situated, was larger than te, two tefachim. And how did it fit in this little pace over here? So that's what the Gemara is going to say. So basically, come to we're going to read. Let's read it inside now. Um, this is the opinion of Rameir. Of Aluchis, Arkan Shisha, Barachban Shisha, the Luchis were length six, the width was six, the Avian Shlisha, and the thickness was three. Menachas Kneged Arkashal Aran placed on the length of the Aran. Kama Luchis Eichlis Baran, how much does Luchis take up in the Aran? Shnei Mosa Tvachim. There were twelve Tvachim. Shtai Risham Shlisha Tvachim. They had extra three Tvachim on the sides. Same Hem Tefach, Chesil Lekoisa Zev, Chesil Lekoisa Zev. They had a half a Tefach, a Tefach for the half of the wall. And half of this wall, because the wall took up part of the inside of the aren. What was left at the end of the of the aren was They put a sefer Torah in the aren. In pasuk and malachim says it wasn't in the aren, only the two luchos that Moshe put. Now the, the, this pasuk implies that they were only in the aren a luchos. But ma ein ba'aron rak, there's two uh, exclusion over here. There was only in the aron uh, nothing but the luchais. So since you have a miut achar miut, since you have one exclusion after another exclusion, one limitation after another limitation, so we can say they miut achar miut el rabbis. So there must be there was something else in the aron, not just the luchais. And sefer Torah shemur of baron, there was a sefer Torah placed in the aron. So pirasta aron la You explained according to you explained the aron in its length. Say paras aron l'arkay. Now explain the aron in its width. Kama luchis eichlis baron. How much does the luchis uh, take up in the aron? Shish tevachim. There were six tevachim. Shtayru sham shloisha tevachim. So you have to be tevachim. Say mehem tefa chetzer the koyse zev chetzer the koyse zev. Shtayru sham shnei tevachim shloye sefer tov nichnas v'yosik shu dachok divrei meir. So it should be easily. Uh, accessible to take out the Aaron. So we're going to just look back again at the picture of the Aaron according to Rabbi Meir. It's this this picture over here, 12 by 6, two Tvachim on the side, two Tvachim on the side, so you can easily remove the Sefer Torah. Okay? And of course, the Shivrei Luchas was in the Aaron. Says the Gemara, says the Gemara, these are the opinion of Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Yehuda, I mean, Yehuda says, Ba'amas Bashbash Tvachim. He holds that the, you use an Amma that was five Tvachim, not six Tvachim. Yeah, you see, because according to Rameir, every Amma was six Tvachim. According to Rabbi Yehuda, every Amma was five Tvachim. So therefore, you, according to Rabbi Yehuda, according to Rabbi Yehuda, you're explaining it over here like this. That this is how the Aaron looked, which was full. It took up the whole luchos, took up the inside of the Aaron, not the Sefer Torah, according to Rabbi Yehuda. So you explain the the Gemara explain the the Brisa continues. Prasta Aaron of Arka you're saying upon us Aaron of Machbei kam luchos oigdos ba Aaron shish tefach mishtar yisham tefach mal same hem chazi tefach the etzba chazi lekoisa zeh the etzba lekoisa zeh he holds that there was only the thick the walls of the Aaron was only thick a finger breadth which is a half a tefach mishtar yisham tefach you have a tefach shboy amud of shboy. So he says that you instead, since there was a little tefach over here, so in the little tefach on off to the walls, they put these silver, you see right over here, the silver poles over here. That's the way Rabbi Huda explains it. There was a box on uh, that the Pelishtim who captured the Aaron sent it out, sent back some things uh, like an Achbar, a couple of Achbarim and Tchirim in the in in a box as a present to Hashem, uh, and because they captured the Aaron and they and, the, and they wanted to do tshuva. So they sent that to the Aaron. So that box was also in the in the in the Kodesh Kedoshim. But all of Sefer Torah Munach Shnema Koyach Sefer Torah V'Sam Toisim Mitzad Aron Bris Hashem. The Torah says, "Take the Sefer Torah and put it next to the Aron Bris Hashem." Mitzad Toy Munach Loy B'Soichay. 
So therefore, according to Rabbi Huda, there was this box over here. When the plishtim, there's a box underneath, and on top of that, there's a sefer Torah on there. So now, Mani Mekayim Ein Bar and Rock the Rock. What does it mean that there was a double miut? There was something else in the Aron. According to Beauty, you have to put something else in the Aron because there was two miutim. The rabbis, we go to Yudal and Mabei Shivri Luchish Menachem Aron. The broken pieces of the Luchis were placed in the Aron. The broken pieces of the Luchis were placed in the Aron. Says the Gemara. This is the question. This is a question according to Rabbi Meir. Rabbi Meir kept saying that the, the original Luchas was placed, in the, the original Torah was placed in the in the in the in the Aaron. So now the question is: If you're going to hold that the Sefer Torah has to, has a circumference of six tefachim, Michte, we know. If there's a circumference of three tefachim, yesh by roch of tefach, that means the diameter, the width of it, is a tefach. So if you have something that's six tefachim in, in in circumference, it is it's precisely two tefachs of diameter. But so far, so good. All, all you need is two tefachs of diameter. But nafish but even the limitsois and eagle, since the Sefer Torah was always wrapped up in the middle, so nafish lay me tre tifcha rafka the bene benu, bete pushka hechi asri. Since you always put the Sefer Torah uh, sort of like wrapped in the middle, it wasn't it rolled up in the middle. So you see it's like you know equal. So then then it it definitely had some space in between. I'm gonna write it over here, a little space in between. So it made the circumference of this entire Sefer Torah more than tfa, two tvachim. So how did it fit in a two tvachim box? So in the two Tfachim space. So the Gemara says two Tarutim. First of all, the Sefer Torah wasn't wrapped uh, in the middle. Since it's the other Sefer Torah that you read from, they rolled it in, they rolled it towards one side. Amar Abacha Bar Yankov, Sefer Ez, Sefer Azar al-Tchila, Sefer Azar al-Tchila, Sefer Azar al I think this is the Sefer Torah uh, that Moshe wrote, and it's and 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 that that they wrote, read on Parshas HaKel and the Kayin Gadol and Yom Kippur, that was always you know, rolled up to Parshas Bereshis. So, therefore, it was exactly two tefachim in diameter. But if it's exactly two tefachim in diameter, how could you fit two tefachs into two tefachs? It's, that's a problem. You're right. that it, They didn't roll the whole thing. They they left over a little bit that was not rolled, let's say at the end of Zaysa uh, Bracha, and they rolled that for itself, and then they Put it on top, so they made the the Sefer Torah a little bit smaller than a two tefachim um, a diameter. So now the Gemara just wraps up a few things of odd ends that even Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Meir they have to finish up the psukim to make it sense uh, to each other. It says the Gemara Rabbi Yehuda Mekama de Leisa Arga Sefer Torah Hecha Hava Yosef. Before the Plishtim came around, where was the Torah? Uh, uh, placed because if you're telling me that the Sefer Torah was never in the Aaron, so then where was the Sefer Torah placed before the Pelishim sent the box? Uh, was it on the floor? And it says, Like I explained, there was a shelf leading out from the Aaron, and on that, uh, the, the Sefer Torah was placed. Now, says the Gemara, a few more questions. What does he do that says that the Sefer Torah was on the side of the Aaron? And says the Gemara, it doesn't mean that the Sefer Torah was on a, on the side of the Aaron, because Rabbi Yudah brought a posik that seemed to imply on the bottom of the page over here, the Koyach Sefer Torah, the Sam Toysu Mitzad Aaron Baris Hashem, put it on the side of the Aaron. So how does Rabbi Meir interpret that posik? He says, you're right, it was on the side of the Aaron, but within the Aaron, not on the outside of the Aaron. Ahomu Bayele, the Mismanach Le Mitzad, the Mismanach Bein Luchai, the Oilem Begabe Ben Mitzad. You didn't put the Sefer Torah in between the two Luchais, but you put it off to the side, and that's how Rabbi Meir has it in the picture. You put it off to the side. You didn't put the Sefer Torah in between and put the Luchas to uh, uh, separate it. So that's what it means. But really, it was always inside. Where did he put the two silver poles? And says Gemara bin Baroi that you could put on the outside. It didn't say it had to be inside the Aram. Says the Gemara, Rameir, Shiva Luchas Minach Baram in Ale. How did how does Rameir know that the broken piece of the Luchas were in the Arain? Because uh, because that's what Rabbi Hudi uses was Ain Baran Rak, that, that there was other things in the Aran, and he uses that to to include the Shivari Luchas. That the Shivri Luchas was in the Aaron. So how did he know that the Shivri Luchas was in the Aaron? And says the Gemara, Nafkele, Midrav Huna. He learns it from Rav Huna. 
But Lamed, since it says shame, shame, and and uh, and the word the word name twice, and it's talking about the Aaron. So Malamed, there were two things. There were two special things in the Aaron that had the name of God on it. One was the original Luchos, the broken, and which Moshe broke, and also the, the second Luchos that Moshe Rabbeinu brought down. So those were in the Aaron. So we have another pasuk for that. The Idach. What is Rabbi Yehu? Who to do with that pasuk? Homo bailei lech Rabbi Yehuda and Dom Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Shimon Yichai. That he needs it for that. That uses that pasuk for what Rabbi Shimon Yichai explained. The Lamed Shashem v'Chol Kinoim Menuchem Mukunoyev Menuchem Aaron. They had a piece of paper, maybe in the Aaron, that had the name of the Shema Mafarish and some of the nicknames, so to speak, of God that were placed in the Aaron. So that's what that's what you need. This pasuk. Shame, shame. All the names of God were written into the Aaron. Vidach, Rameir, who used that pasta to teach you Luchas and Shivri Luchas were in the Aaron. How did you know what Rabbi Shimon ben Yechoi says that all the names of God were written in the Aaron? Nami Babay Leilah, he needs it for this. So the Gemara says, Eina Khanami. He uses Eina Khanami. It's true. That Rab Shimon, that he uses that pasuk to teach you, like Rab Shimon ben Yehoi says, that all the names of God were written in the Aaron. And then you back to square one. El Shivri Luchas Menachem Aaron Menolei. How did Rabbi Meir know that the broken pieces of the Luchas? Were in the of the first Lucas were also placed in the Aaron. Menale, Nafkele, and the Tan Rabbi Yosef. He learned it from what Rabbi Yosef taught. The Tan Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yosef taught, Ashishibarta Visamtam, whatever you broke, you place in the Aaron. Bilame, Chaluches, Vishivi Luches, Menachambar. Since there's a, a connection between with uh, uh, between the broken Luches and the Aaron, it seems to imply that the broken pieces of the Aaron were placed, uh, the broken pieces of Luches were placed in the in the Aaron. That's the Pasuk. Let's read the Pasuk inside. Uh, sometimes, it's some, somehow, the Pasuk says, Ashishibarta, the, really next to this Pasuk, Samtam Oisai. That's what we learn from that Pasuk. Now the Gemara says, okay, what does he do with this Ashishibarta, uh, the Samtam? What is Rabbi 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 who to do with that Pasuk? He already knows that the broken piece of the Luchas were in the Aaron from the Miat of Ain and Ain Rak, Ain Bar Rak, so Rabbi Yehuda has this pasuk extra. Uh, so what does he need this pasuk to teach you? Uh, he needs to teach you the halacha of the the the, the theme of what Rishlakish said about about Moshe Rabbeinu. That you broke it. I thank you for breaking the luchos because. That was one of the, you would think that this was not a good thing that Moshe Rabbeinu just slammed the, threw down the luchis that he got the, from, from Hashem. No, it's it's one of the things that Moshe Rabbeinu did on his own. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu agreed that he did the right thing because had he not done, had he given the luchis to the Jewish people, right then and there, God would have destroyed the Jewish people. Uh, so that's uh, what each one square off. But the bottom line of the Machleik is, is how, what, how, did the Aaron look? Did it look like this, according to Rav Meir, or did it look like this, according to Rav Yehuda? Okay, we will stop here and continue with Daft Hasbav. That's Shem tomorrow.